Now, overwhelming amounts of people are lonely, and at such a young age, why do you think that is? Isn't that extraordinary? The research went and found out that over, the, the over 35s, 22 million fear loneliness. That's absolutely terrifying, isn't it? They've, they're afraid that they're not going to be able to get work, um, that they will become anti, you know, people won't love them dearly, that they won't know how to live their lives on their own. It's horrifying. We're afraid of loneliness. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's the rise of social media? Do you think people feel more isolated, the lack of, lack of community? Yeah, so you see, in the old days, when we didn't have television or radio, what we'd all do is to go down to the pub or go to the bingo or just join round or more families would live together. So you'd have old Aunt Ida and, you know, so-and-so and Uncle Fish and Grandma and Grandpa, as well as the little ones crammed into a house. So although that was kind of ghastly, you weren't lonely. But now <laughs> we are all divided up and we've got our neat little flats and our front doors and our divided community. I think that loneliness is a real threat. Now, is it, is it more than just a sorrowful thing? Yes, because it can impact your mental state, it can make you very depressed to be lonely, and it can also impact on your health, because people don't eat properly, they don't exercise properly, because going for a walk alone is not as much fun as walking with somebody, or doing anything with somebody is much more fun than on your own. So people become more sedentary, more housebound, more depressed. What do you think we should do about it? Do you think we need to talk to each other more? Much more. Um, much more. And also, if you happen to know somebody, be a little bit nosy. Be a nosy neighbour. I'm always keen on this. <laughs> Find out if there's anybody who might need a bit of help. Even if you go shopping for them, bring the shopping back. Stay and have a cup of tea. Talk about stuff. Go and watch a television programme with them. Say, we've got something, let's watch the David Attenborough thing together. It'd be such fun to see something together and to discuss things. I think it's the fear of not having anybody to speak to. Now, of course, it is International Widows' Day as yeah. well. So people at home that might not know, what is that all about? Well, it was set up by the most extraordinary man called Raj Lumba, who himself was the son of a widow in India. Widows in India have the most awful time. They are immediately, the second their husband dies, they are sort of disenfranchised. They become nothing. They're stripped of their jewellery, their money, their name, their home, their title. They're either treated as servants or cast out. And if they do remain, they're quite often physically, verbally, sexually abused. The children become nobodies, outcasts. And Raj told me the most heartbreaking story that his mother, when he got married, his mother, who was forced to wear white widow's weeds in India for the rest of her life, was not allowed to attend the, the wedding because in case she brought bad luck on the couple. So widows are seen as psh, outcasts, heartbreaking. Nearly a quarter of a billion widows in the world. It's just too awful to think of. Now, you're an icon to so many people. Is, is loneliness something you personally ever worry about? Is it something that you sort of think about or do you just sort of try to block that out? No, but I was cast away on a desert island once. And although the crew, like you, came on in the daytime and filmed me, in the nights I was alone. And I quite liked the, it, the loneliness of it. I couldn't, I had nothing to read or watch or see or I had nothing. So I had to live in the dark alone. Um, and that was interesting. But gosh, after nine days, I was longing to see people again and be with people again. I do love people. Um, and so I personally will never be lonely because I shall be the bore that come, you feel tugging at your trouser leg. And I go, hi, <laughs> remember me. And you're going, no, get off. <laughs> and so, you have a desert island item that you take with you for those sorts of things. There's something that you can't live without. Um, no, I take, a, I, you know, you think you'd take a book. You'd think you'd take, I'd, I'd usually just take a really sharp knife to cut things. So it's a bit dull, really. And it's, frightening. <laughs> I know, it wouldn't be for killing, it would be for cutting Fine. bamboos and good, stuff. Good, good. Um, and just finally, obviously, you know, you're somebody who's used fame, actually, for lots of brilliant causes. Is that something you've consciously decided? Or do people ask you to do things? How, did, how does that work? It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's both sides of it, but partly that fame is kind of a pretty useless thing to have unless it's useful, unless it can do good to somebody. It doesn't do good to the people who have it, I promise me. Um, I promise you that, rather. Um, but what it is useful for is drawing attention to things that you hope that the press will take hold of. The press are fabulous. Once they shine their lamps on something, people know about it. If they ignore it, it's not there. But if you put Jude Law somewhere, people go, yo, I'm going to follow Jude Law. Let's see what he's got to say. And so what Jude says, then we follow it. So that's interesting. That's what fame's for. And just finally, finally, I think Patsy sort of always thought she was a bit right on. Do you think she'd make a good political activist or do you think she'd be dreadful? Do you know the answer to that is so no. So <laughs> utterly no. She absolutely wouldn't have a clue. She's completely useless. Mm -hmm. She's also had all her insides taken out. So <laughs> although she's going to last forever, it's not going to make much sense for much longer. You wouldn't have her live in an interview, would you? No, I don't think so. <laughs>